Here we find a, a, a Roman coin, and we have these words, Imperata Caesar Vespasius, which means Pontifex Maximus. Basically, here we find the Emperor Vest, um, Vespasian. He's basically claiming the title of Pontifex Maximus. Pontifex Maximus at Rome, the head of the College of Pontiffs, exercising disciplinary function over them as well as over the Vestal Virgins whom he appointed together with the Flamens and Rex Sacrorums. He also published the decisions decretor without the binding forces of law of the College of Pontiffs. He had his official headquarters in the Regia and an official residence or Domus Publica. The position was one of great dignity and importance, exercising control of the whole state religion. It was held by Julius Caesar and by all the emperors down to Gratian, who dropped the title after AD 381. That's from the Oxford University Press. From the Columbia University Press, Pontifex Maximus, highest priest of Roman religion and official head of the College of Pont Pontificates. As the chief administrator of religious affairs, he regulated the conduct of religious ceremonies, consecrated temples and other holy places, and controlled the calendar. During the time of the empire and until Christianity became firmly established, the emperor was designated Pontifex Maximus. After the supremacy of Christianity, the popes assumed the title. When Medo-Persia conquered Babylon, the Babylonian religion was maintained, but after the revolt of the priesthood, the priests of Babylon were driven out of Medo-Persia and established themselves at Pergamum, taking with them their titles and vestures. The last pontiff king of Pergamum was Attalus III, who bequeathed his title to the Roman Emperor in 133 BC. In the year 375 AD, Emperor Gratian refused the title, and in the year 431 AD, the title was taken over by Damascus, Bishop of Rome. The present-day College of Cardinals, with the Pope at the head, is identical to the College of Pontiffs, with the Pontifex Maximus at the head. What I should say at 133 BC was that the head of the Roman Empire, he assumed that title because Julius Caesar was in fact the first Roman Emperor. Here we see the Acropolis. The Acropolis was in Pergamum. This was the center of Babylonian worship. When the Babylonian priests uh, left Babylon after the invasion of Medo-Persia, they set their base here. Following the conquest of Mesopotamia by the Persians, the Babylonian priests had fled to Pergamum in Asia Minor, which, is, which we find in Athens. Here they erected the, the Acropolis temples of Pergamum in honour of the Greek pantheon, but continued to worship the Babylonian mystery god under the name Saturnus. The Babylonian mysteries were preserved in the Temple of Zeus at Pergamum and transferred to Rome in 133 BC. The penetration of the new religion of Babylon became so general that Rome was called the New Babylon. The front facade of the Temple of Zeus rebuilt in the Pergamum Museum. We find it's full of symbolism, snakes and serpents. And here we see in Athens. And what do we find here? We find coins, okay, depicting uh, the Pope. And what do we have on that coin? Pontifex Maximus. The great bridge builder. In 133 BC, the Babylonian solar cult was bequeathed to Rome by Attalus III. There, its symbols and forms were incorporated into the cult of Caesar and later into Roman Catholicism. Note that the <clears throat> religion of Babylon revolved around 666, and whichever way you add up the lines, it all totals 666. And they used to wear these pendants. So that they basically acknowledge that they worship the god of 666. There are many more symbols of sun worship that are used in Catholicism, such as halos, various pagan crosses, lightning bolts, hand signals from, from sun worship cults, tridents, fleur-de-lises, sexismal triangles with the eye of Hatha, 
Coptic shells, which in paganism served as a symbol of the cosmos. Astrological signs, globes as symbols of rulership of the universe. Pagan gods carried the globe just as Catholic icons do. And the largest globe in the world is on top of St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. Sacred hearts as used in many sun cults, sacred animals, many of them mythological such as dragons, the serpents, unicorn and the phoenix. Fertility symbols such as pine cones, pagan deities wore the pine cone on their crozier just as the popes do today. Sacred trees, symbols of the suffering and resurrected sun god and prayer beads for repetitive prayers even though the Bible admonishes. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Matthew 6, 7. Here we find winged serpents, winged serpents, spirits signifying the soul of the departed in Egypt. We find winged serpent guardians on King Tut's throne. And Mayan serpent sun god Quasicotl coming out of the mouth of the dragon. And in Rome, we find winged serpents on chariots carrying the soul to heaven. And the serpent boats in Scandinavia, all full of serpents. Hydra behind head of Lord Nirishmadeva in India, full of serpents. In a Roman bath in Bath, England, notice the serpent a symbol of healing. And we find this serpent of healing um, also in Pergamum, where they used to um, use the snake as a form of healing. The serpent door handle new uh, St. Mary's Cathedral San Francisco. And the dragon on a large paper crest in the Vatican Museum. Remember what the Vatican stands for? The Divining Serpent. And look at Mary crushing the head of a serpent.